Well, hi everyone, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining our 10,000 Coffees Office Hour session today on Science Career Conversations with McCain Foods. Um, we're super excited to have you all here today, and I know some of you have been returning um, from the spring sessions that we offered um, in 2021, and so we're excited to see some, some new faces and some returning people here as well today. Um, my name is Natasha Rigo, and I'm the Young Alumni Coordinator with UMB's Alumni Office. Um, and today we're excited to be here with McCain Foods Limited. Uh, UNB and McCain actually share a strategic partnership, which means that we work together on a lot of different initiatives from research to education, employment, um, enrichment, and, and many other things. So today it's, it's also really exciting to work together on this session. So most of you here today have been members of our 10,000 Coffees platform um, for a little bit of time. I know there's also some who joined just recently or joined just to, just to attend this webinar. Um, so thank you so much for everyone for being part of this program. We really appreciate it, whether you're a student who's seeking mentorship or you're an alumni who has volunteered to give back. Um, it's been really great having so many people on board. And we really want to offer these types of webinar sessions for you as an exclusive event as a member of the platform. So thanks so much for being here. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items today um, before we begin with our guest speaker. So we do have about an hour for this session and we are gonna begin by hearing from our fantastic alumna, Sherry Garrow and her career journey from UNB to working for McCain's. And then we're gonna follow it up with a Q&A period. So many of you submitted questions in advance. Thanks so much for doing that. There were some great questions that came through. Uh, but at any point in this event, if you wanted to ask Sherry anything else about her time at UNB, her career, working for McCain's, please feel free to drop it into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen at any point, and we'll get to those questions as well during the Q&A period. So with all that said, it's my great pleasure to introduce our alumna speaker today, Sherry Garrow. Sherry graduated from UNB in 2006 with a Bachelor of Science, and then again in 2009 with a Master's of Science. Um, she's now working as Senior Scientist of Product Development with, McCain's food, with McCain Foods and throughout her career she's had the opportunity to learn potato processing for french fries from the ground up. She's worked with uh, different food providers and, and retail services and products that I'm sure you have tried yourselves from Tim Hortons wedges to a w fries, KFC fries and so on. Uh, but I'll let Sherry talk to you about this today. Um, so with all that said, Sherry, I'll hand the floor over to you and thank you so, so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It's actually my great pleasure and I'm very excited to talk to everyone today. And just before we started, I was saying how I spoke to my coworker about uh, this uh, talk and she said, oh, you're such a nerd. You love potatoes. You can talk. You'll be fine. And it's true. I have no problem talking about uh, potatoes and my passion with McCain's and I wanted to share that with everyone. And it might seem as a little bit of an odd leap of how I go from UMB uh, to working at McCain's making french fries as I'm sure you're aware there's no how to make a french fry course at UMB. So it's been an interesting journey, um, how to get here. And I have joked before that it's been luck, pure luck. And a mentor once pointed out to me uh, when I made that offhanded comment that it's amazing how the more luck you have with the harder you work. And so I would like to share how I went from a UMB student um, 20 years ago this month, um, starting in my first year, to now making french fries, hash browns, cakes, and pizza pockets every single day and in a global factory working across six continents. So the joke that my father likes to tell is how did I end up in my job uh, when he is telling about his daughter is it because I knew what a potato beetle looked like. And the reason he loves that particular joke is I started a summer job with the Agriculture Canada and Agri-Foods uh, in Fredericton and down on the Lincoln Road when I was in my second year of UMB. I needed to have a summer job and I was looking for something that would give me a little bit more of a scientific background. I knew I wanted to work in a lab someday. And so the idea of being able to work at Agri Agriculture Canada in one of their labs had a great appeal to me. And I put in my application for the summer student work program, not expecting to get anywhere, but you know what they say, it doesn't hurt to try. The uh, application required several interviews. And on one of the interviews, I was in front of 
too very imposing to me <laughs> being 20 years old um, scientists. And they are sitting there asking me these very important questions. And one of them leaned over and almost as if it was a mugshot, put a picture across the table and said, can you point out a potato beetle? Now the joke was that they were all potato beetles, but they were the different life stages of a potato beetle. And I was the lucky candidate who knew that answer and was able to regale them with tales of all the times I was sent out to the fields and to the uh, farm garden to squish potato beetles as a child. With that tiny little, you know, insequential knowledge that I had locked away in my brain, I landed the job and started that summer in the entomology lab. It wasn't where I envisioned myself to be. Um, I'd always had a love of molecular biology and virology, and I expected myself to go more into the micro lab. But at that time, I was just really excited for a job. And it turns out that the job had a bit more interest in it than I was expecting, as when I showed up on my first day, they showed me where the potato beetles were, and I met the other students who were working on um, and aphids at the time. And I noticed that there was an empty laboratory. And I asked them why was there an empty laboratory with all this really cool equipment and nobody working in it. And they explained to me that it was the molecular biology department for the entomology scientists, but he had no one to work in it. And so of course, you know, being eager and wanting to show that I could just do everything, I volunteered that I would love to take a learn in their molecular department. And I'd work with the entomology scientists to figure out what he needed done and how I could use it. So I started that summer working on pesticide resistant potato beetles and I got to breed my own col colonies of them. And then I developed a method on how to extract their DNA so that we could map out their genome and find the, the pesticide resistant genes. And we were thinking that we would develop a test for the farmers in the area to sample beetles and be able to know how much pesticide resistance was present, and then they would be able to determine exactly how much pesticides they had to apply. Being only there for four months, I never did get to see this cool micro test ever developed, but I had a lot of fun that summer smashing potato beetles and extracting DNA. Um, I also was plotting my very own potato fields and learning how to do the rows and how to segregate my potato beetles so they didn't infect any other areas, which potatoes we were growing, uh, what were the proper times that had to be sprayed and what was the bulking season and the overall harvest process of potatoes. And besides just digging up a potato to eat, that was my first foray into learning this whole new department of um, agronomy. I also was able to meet several other scientists who worked at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, um, and I casually met one of them in the cafeteria, and she turned out to be the microbiologist and the keen person who I had always wanted to work for, but didn't land a job in her department. When I was telling her about the molecular work I was doing down in entomology, um, she seemed interesting, but I thought it was polite conversation. Uh, September comes, I go back to school, and I received a phone call halfway through the year uh, that there was a part-time technician position in the microbiology lab, and that particular scientist was interested if I would like to have it. I was already carrying a full workload, and I had a part-time job in retail, and unfortunately, I had to turn down that offer. Um, but come summertime, the offer was back on the table, and I made the great leap into what I thought was going to be my lifelong career was microbiology. And it was great fun and I did learn so much. And to this day, I consider that scientist, uh, Dr. Claudia Goyer, to be the best boss I've ever had. I measure every mentor and leader I've had since then against her. Uh, in that lab, I learned all about microbiology much past what I was able to learn hands-on at UMB in the biology labs, um, many new techni uh, technical aspects, and we were working on uh, real-time um, PCRs and measuring mRNA in soil bacteria in potato fields. Um, I worked in her lab for two summers and loved every minute of it. I uh, did continue on in a part-time technician throughout the school year and then bridged that into a master's. And again, I joke that I was just in the right place 
at the right time um, that there was an opportunity to do a master's because my scientists had won a grant uh, for a particular climate change uh, project where we were studying greenhouse gas emissions from potato fields and what would be the contributors to this greenhouse gases. And again, I, when I'm telling this story, it's been pointed out that it wasn't just being in the right place at the right time, although that certainly did help. It was because I had asked, I had said, um, I wanna do a master's. When I saw other master's students and even PhD students working at Agriculture Canada, it, it just seemed like, wow, that's so interesting. They get to do science every day. They're working on these interesting projects. They're designing things themselves. They're running their laboratory. And it seemed like, okay, now I've switched. That's now what I wanted to do. I, I wanna go on and not just work in a laboratory. I wanted to design experiments. I'm gonna do my master's. And I, I brought this up. I, I said it to my uh, peers. I, I mentioned it to other colleagues and I mentioned it to uh, my then scientist, Dr. Goyer. And when the opportunity came up and I had been vocal of, I wanna do a master's, you know, I would like to do this. It was right place, right time. Um, so graduated with my undergrad in 2006, rolling straight into my master's. Um, ironically, my undergraduate is actually in biophysics. So again, didn't end up exactly where I thought it was going to be. And I worked on my master's for two years in the lab, uh, continuing uh, the hands-on research. And my particular research was about um, denitrification um, activity out of greenhouse, or denitrification out of soils producing greenhouse gases, and what would be the carbon sources that are used during rotation periods that would impact those uh, greenhouse gases. So denitrification is a process of uh, certain microorganisms that will produce uh, nitrous oxide and nitric oxide uh, byproducts. And they are, while in lower amounts, uh, much more uh, effective greenhouse gases than carbon. Uh, so carbon addition to the soils during natural rotation of potato agronomy can influence how much greenhouse gases through nitrous oxide is being produced. So I wanted to understand the organisms and the populations that were occurring on the surface and in the soils around potatoes and how that produced greenhouse gases through different crop cycles and therefore design an appropriate cover uh, crop or crop rotation to minimize as much as possible. Through that work, um, I worked with a soil microbiologist. I worked with a soil expert. Um, I worked with molecular um, a scientists, uh, learned really cool and at that time, cutting edge techniques for extracting mRNA out of soil uh, to do real time uh, PCR and monitor the expression of these de uh, denitrification genes. Through each of those small areas and, and who I was able to meet along my path, I realized I was building small relationships. At the time, I didn't think about it. I thought, these are people I work with. Uh, these are people I'm running into in the cafeteria, you know, elevate, elevator chats, you know, small talks around the way. But I realized since then, and looking at my journey as I was preparing for this talk is that each of those interactions and each of those scientists or each of those colleagues, every technician I talked to was imparting a small amount of knowledge in me that really led to a bigger picture and gave me another opportunity. It was another door that could potentially open because I had interacted with them. And I find that every door that opened, I, got, I went to a great new place. The soil scientists that I had worked with during my master's uh, really took the time um, to give me an even greater depth of information about potato cultures or potato crops and agronomy and everything that goes into in uh, UM, not UMB, sorry, in New Brunswick about growing potatoes and who uses them. Uh, and through that particular um, scientist, his name was Bernie, uh, he introduced me to McCain. And I wasn't really aware of McCain as far as I was concerned that that was just a bag of French fries. Like that was a name I saw in the grocery store. Uh, I didn't really make the connection that they were here in New Brunswick and they were a pretty big deal here in New Brunswick. Uh, he had sent me um, up here to Florenceville to get seed potatoes because he wanted to plant a, a new type of variety or establish a new uh, crop um, 
grid for an upcoming season of research. And so he sent me up here and he told me, you're going to meet this fellow, it's Stephen McCain, and uh, he knows what you're coming for and it's $10, get the bag of potatoes. So I drive up here and didn't know anybody, certainly didn't know who Stephen McCain was. And I go to get this bag of potatoes and out comes this fellow in dirty overalls to give me the potatoes and he says hi and I introduce myself and at that time I thought it was the end of it. Went back with my bag of potatoes. Uh, later on, I learned that uh, Stephen McCain is actually one of the sons of the founding fathers and <laughs> is a pretty big deal uh, to the company. So he was one on the board, uh, not the chairman, but he was on the board of directors and the chairman of, or chair of the company. Uh, but he also oversaw McCain Produce at the time. Um, so that's how he happened to be coming out in a pair of dirty overalls. He was helping with the sorting and the racking of potatoes, how I met him. After my master's, I plunked down to start writing my thesis and my journal articles. And I thought I was done of uh, my research for that. And I expected I'd take a little bit of time. I'd just write and then I'd figure out what my next move would be. I honestly thought it would be right back to working for the government for Agriculture Canada. I expected I would either go into a PhD or I would work contract positions, work for another scientist, and that would be my life until I found a permanent position with Agriculture Canada. But at the same time, uh, my now husband, he graduated from UMB in his business degree and he was looking for a job. And he had an interview with McCain Foods. And I said, well, that's cool. I've been to Florenceville, I know that. And so he decided he would come have the interview and see where that takes him. And he joined the company. He thought it was a great company. He liked the area. And he decided to start his career with McCain in their corporate accounting department. And since I was writing my thesis, and you can write your thesis anywhere, you have a laptop and some research papers, I moved with him to Florenceville to do my writing. And as we drove into town, <laughs> there right off the highway is this big building with a sign on the front that says McCain Potato Processing Technology Center. And it's a glass building and it looks very fancy. And I realized they have a lab, they do research, they have science here. And suddenly my plan changed. It was no longer to go back to Agriculture Canada and work for the government. It was, I'm gonna do research. I'm gonna join the real world. I'm gonna go into private industry and I'm gonna do research for McCain. And then I set my heart on it and I did the same thing. I told everyone what my plan was. I said, I wanna work at the PPTC, which is short for the technology center, the processing technology center. And I asked anybody who knew, do you know somebody who works at PPTC? Can you get me a contact? Uh, do you know if they open jobs? And I was scrolling Indeed and all of those job posting sites to see if there's any openings. And I got nothing. I sent cold call letters. I reached out to people through my contacts here that I met through my husband. Didn't get a single response. Didn't get anything. And I was heartbroken. Um, that was about six months, which worked out with good timing in my writing because it took me six months to finish my thesis and my journal articles. And then it almost seemed like kismet because as soon as I submitted what I thought was my last draft of my journal articles, a posting came up on Indeed for a research lab assistant at the PPTC. And of course I submitted that resume as quick as I could hit the button. And then I sat and I waited and I waited and finally got the call for an interview, which I thought was not going to go anywhere at all since it took them so long to even respond to my application. And I went in and went into this very big imposing room uh, with about six scientists across the table. And they asked me so many questions about potatoes. But luckily with all the work I had done at Agriculture Canada, all those scientists I had met along the way who took their time to show me what they were working on and how things worked the way they worked and what else they could do. I knew a lot of the answers to their questions. I also think it kind of helped that I dropped the fact that I had met Stephen McCain um, in his overalls at one point. I'll never know for sure if that sealed the deal, but I like to think that it did.
After two weeks, and again, I had my heart broken thinking I didn't get the position. I was called um, around dinner time on a Friday and told that I had my very first real grown up job offer. And of course, I took it and secretly did the little Snoopy dance uh, of celebration. And one week later, I started what is now my career at McCain. In the PPTC, uh, they have a processing lab, an analytical lab, and a pilot line. Uh, the pilot line is what I call our Lego play world of making French fries. It's a 1 25th scale of a normal French fry factory, and it has all interchangeable parts. So you're able to take apart every unit that would make a French fry, change them around, put new ones in, and it's a product developer's dream. It's a playground for making French fries and all new potato-like products. And I was set to work at learning every unit of operations of that pilot line from the ground up. My director at that time, he gave me two pieces of advice, advice on my first day. And the one, first was, if you can understand how a French fry is made from the minute that potato enters the door, you can answer any question that might come up in the future of a French fry. And then the second piece of advice was, don't eat too many French fries. We don't have a gym here yet. And unfortunately, I didn't take a second piece of advice, but I'm working on that. I worked from the potato incoming, um, loading the preheater with potatoes, uh, monitoring the cuts of potatoes as they go down the line, uh, monitoring the levels of ingredients in the flume system, doing the quality control checks across the uh, line, uh, doing even packaging the finished product. And I worked every unit of that line doing shift work uh, for a month. It was about a week and a half uh, at every unit. And it was dirty and hands-on work. And I was right with everybody else who had been doing that job. Many people on that line had been working for McCain for 25 plus years. So it was a great learning opportunity to roll up my sleeves right with them, learn what they knew um, as kind of a living history and see exactly how French fries were made. From Moving to the pilot line, I would consider going in reverse a bit, and I started working in our processing lab. And that is like the bench playground for making French fries and potato products and doing research. We had four uh, full-time scientists and then two part-time scientists who would come in to the PPTC, and I'd be working for them executing their experiment protocols. Through that work, I was able to learn exactly what they were researching, how it worked, and was able to connect it with other work I had done in the past to be able to build on their work for them. And then I moved into the analytical lab, which turned out to be a whole new area of love for me. I loved the analytical lab, and I specialized in developing rabbit methods that could be used in our manufacturing um, environments for analyzing different attributes or finished particulars of French fries and potato goods. Having the experience in every area of the PPTC, plus my background of Agriculture Canada, as well as my um, undergrad and graduate degrees, allowed me to make connections easily with people and projects, um, connect things, and ask for my own research as well. And I was able to lead my own research projects. And every time I was able to complete something, it opened a door for another opportunity to come up. So that's usually why I describe my career progression as stumbling along. It was just luck. I finished one thing, another opportunity came up. Um, from working and running my own experiments with the scientists at PPTC, um, I then went on mat leave and I was heartbroken <laughs> because <laughs> I expected, you know, my work would go on without me. Um, I would be behind the times. I wouldn't know what was going on. But luckily, I came back and I had trained an individual to cover for me while I was gone. And that individual was able to keep all the projects running. And I was then able to take on even larger challenges because I had a support system. And so that was one of the major learning lessons was don't ever be afraid to let someone else shine. In fact, giving someone the opportunity and building them up and working so that they shine will help you shine um, just as much. And so it was a great team building exercise for that. The even larger opportunities I was able to build upon because now I had a support system filling in for my work uh, was taking on a global project of uh, fat claim. Uh, I developed and implemented a rabbit fat 
method and instrumentation across our global network. And we had a major uh, QSR or quick service research uh, restaurant. Um, that's a fast food chain for anyone not in the biz. And they were launching a new fry that had a reduced fat claim and it required a substantiation because that is a regulatory and legal claim. That gave me the opportunity to work globally across our company, go places I've never been before, work with third parties, uh, see manufacturing and see a whole new side of the business. And from there, that led to an opportunity that there was an opening in our product development category. They needed someone to fill in while two individuals went on that leave. Me, never backing down from a challenge, leapt at it. And during that year, I've discovered a brand new love that the challenge of product development brings everything I have done in my career to a culmination point. Everything fit together perfectly. It is science, it's research. You are putting together problem solving skills. You're working with many different individuals. You're learning constantly. You get to see a finished good at the end of the day. There's customer focus. You're working with customers and bringing their needs and translating that into an actual product and then making their customers happy. I never really thought that my days at Reitman's selling clothes would give me the skills that I needed to succeed now, but customer focus and working with a &W, Tim Hortons, Burger King, KFC, that has given me that ability to know what they need, translate it, keep them happy, quite frankly, and keep our business moving and doing the best for both of us. It's not a skill that some of my colleagues have been able to develop because they didn't have that chance. So we're trying to get them more comfortable with it. But I do like to credit the fact that I had to sell blouses and pants and other clothing to many people in order to build that skill. And now it feels effortless. The other area um, that I like to say is something I used to succeed is the fact that I don't really know when to say no. And I think that have come from all the years of asking what I want or saying I want. I, I want to go work in a lab. I want to do my master's. I want to work at that building and do research. I want a bigger challenge. And then by saying you want it, it kind of opens up your eyes so that when the opportunity presents itself, it's there. And part of that was, I don't know when to say no. And I never back down from a challenge. And I figure as long as I keep working, as long as I work harder, I'll have some more luck. And the uh, A&W Fry, uh, was an example of that internally. It's, it's to date one of my greatest accomplishments. It was a, a customer we never thought we would have and everyone said it was the white whale and I said I want that business. I want to make their fry for them and I happened to say that to the right person um, in an innocent elevator speech and they connected me to a team that happened to be going for it and that led into about six months of my life about 15 different prototypes, 600 different analysis, three different meetings with the customer, two different plant trials, and a whole lot of pressure and stress on my shoulders. But it worked out because I didn't know um, when to say no. That particular opportunity has just led into greater opportunities where I've been able to work through not only entering product development at an entry level of associate scientists, I've now worked up to a senior scientist position. I have at any time a range of people working with me to execute my projects. We do food service, we do retail. I've now expanded into not only doing potato, I'm now working on our prepared food industry as well. Again, because I asked for it. I saw something, I said I wanted to do it, and I was able to work towards that opportunity. I'm developing Pizza Pockets. I soon have two new flavors coming to a store near you, and I hope you'll all be able to go and see them. And we have new cakes coming out as well. There's many different areas um, in McCain Foods. I've only worked through two of them so far, so far, our PPTC and our product development, and I don't expect my career to end there. I don't know where I'm going to go in my next phase. I, I haven't said yet what it's going to be, but there's so many different functions in McCain um, that I'm sure 
I will find another area to work into with a new challenge. Um, I work with many different business units, such as technical services and manufacturing, engineering, customer service, sales, quality, food safety. I've worked in three different continents now, although we have plants on six continents. I've worked with customers in many um, different countries, different products, and I've been able to see not only my own career progression, but other career progression of my colleagues. Uh, we have a great mentorship program here at McCain. I've been mentored by several and I've mentored others. And it's amazing how there are so many opportunities with McCain that outside of the company, I was never aware was here. I didn't even know this job existed. And it's the same feeling that I've had other colleagues who join me. Once you get in here and you learn what's going on and all the different opportunities, business and areas that there are, there's a lot that you can go into and careers that you'll not even know existed in the beginning. So with that, um, I will take any questions, but I want to um, bring up the fact that McCain is a great company to work for. I had a three-year plan when I came. I thought I would be here three years and then I'd find something new. It's been 14 years now. My husband's been here for 15 years. My colleague has been here for 41 years and we're retiring next year. This company has a lot of different opportunities. People have a lot of places they can go, but a lot of love for the company as well. And we have very strong values. And I know that this area is a little rural, but there is still a lot here um, to offer. It's not far away from several different uh, medium-sized towns and there are opportunities at all time within McCain. Um, so I did want to point out that uh, we have many different functions um, that maybe people aren't aware of that we have careers for at any time. Marketing and fit, uh, finance and sales. Like I said, my, my husband's in corporate accounting. He's in finance. There's HR. We have our logistics department. Uh, we have um, many companies that we actually own as well, such as Dan Ross. So we've got trucking. Um, engineering, there's legal. There is microbiologist as well, which I've learned. I could have kept that route if I wanted to. Um, and R&D, uh, where I'm currently sat. Um, I really recommend that if anyone wants to learn more about McCain, um, to go to our website, so mccain.ca. Uh, you can learn about our values, um, different functions um, that are here, um, different um, stories that people have uh, posted about their time at McCain. And if you did want to see, um, see any career opportunities, um, I've put the link in there. Um, please go. Um, you can cold call, which worked for me in the end, um, and submit in any resumes. But we also have postings that we post at all times, too. And they're posted um, on all major uh, job sites, as well as LinkedIn. Our HR is very active on LinkedIn. So I think I've rambled on a bit longer than I expected to. So I'm happy to take any questions. Well, thank you so much, Sherry. That was really, really interesting and so great to hear about you know, how you went from pot your, your potato beetles to a job in microbiology to your master's to like the persistence and the perseverance that you had to get to get where you wanted to be at McCain's. I think there were so many great lessons there. So we really appreciate you sharing. Um, one of them that stuck with me is that your, your major when you were in your undergrad wasn't really even the area that you ended up in. So I think that's a great point for some of the students here with us today too, is that all of these experiences are so valuable, whether it's what you're studying now or a job that you might have right after graduation that might not be the career you end up in. They're all such valuable experiences. Um, and Sherry, really, you really touched on that. So thank you for sharing, that's great. Um, so we will jump into Q&A. We do have some questions coming in live, but we also had some that were pre-submitted. So I'm gonna start there. Um, and just to get a reminder to anyone, if you do have questions, the Q&A box is at the bottom of the screen. So feel free to uh, put, in, put in anything that you're curious about. So Sherry, there was a few questions that came to us that were a little bit more focused on, you know, how you got started in your career and what you did as a student to get you there. So I want to ask you a couple of those first. Sure. Um, so, so one person asked us, what, what skills did you learn in your undergrad that you found have really helped you in your professional career? 
This is an excellent question. And I, I tell people this all the time. Yes, my undergraduate is not exactly linked to my job now. Like I said, there's no potato processing undergraduate. But the important aspect about an undergraduate is I found it taught me how to learn. It taught me how to research. It taught me how to find the answers when I don't know and also be comfortable with the fact that I don't know. It's so often to get late, trapped in this area of thinking you have to know everything, but you're never gonna know everything. And so with the undergrad, I got the basics. I, I know general you know, chemistry and biology and physics and math, but it gave me the ability to know when I need to find more information and how to go find that information. Um, I think that's the most important lesson I took out of it. Plus all those contacts I mentioned too, those are important. Yeah, that's fantastic. Really great advice. Thank you. Um, so another student has asked us how, when you were getting started, like how did you, how did you know and where did you search to apply for jobs? I think you touched on this a little bit in terms of some of it was just cold calling, but did you have any, do you have any advice for people who are currently job searching? Yeah, so the first is I found out about that uh, federal program for the Agriculture Canada summer student um, through a fellow student. So I, I'd say your first point of contact is the people you know. And I know that's not, not, not a very satisfactory answer, but look at who you think has a great job and then ask them how they got that. That's how I got my first one. The other area was those very common um, job posting sites. That's how I found about, out about the PPTC job. Um, so I had been scrolling the indeed.com back in the day. Uh, LinkedIn now is what I would really suggest people um, to look into. Um, I know all major companies are posting their jobs on there. Recruiters are on there as well. Make yourself a nice profile, get some contacts, make links with people and you'll find that a lot of opportunities will shake out of the tree that way. So it's really about talking to people. If you see someone doing something, you're really interested in them, talk to them and then look on LinkedIn and get your name there and just be looking at the postings that come up. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think I'll just add to it in terms of LinkedIn. Um, for all of you attending today, I mean, LinkedIn is a great resource to connect with fellow UNB grads um, because as a, as a UNB student and as a future UNB alum, or for those of us here today who are already alumni, um, you have that connection with fellow graduates of UNB and oftentimes they're very willing and eager to connect with you as well. Um, so if you see someone on LinkedIn who is also UNB grad and might be working in a field that you're interested in, don't hesitate to reach out to them. Uh, LinkedIn's a great tool that way. And same with 10,000 Coffees. Obviously, you're all members if you're here today on the platform. So if you search, you're able to search through the list of members that we have. And again, same with Sherry and being very persistent with, uh, with what you wanted to go for. Maybe send a message to any alumni who are working in that area. So yeah, I think that's really great advice. Um, so we, we had an interesting question come in from someone who asked, um, that many young many younger people are interested in math um, and they tend to focus on computer sciences on coding on gaming um, they're interested in what you would tell them to enlighten them that there are other avenues for those who are interested in math and in science that is a good question um so i do understand about the a focus on the gaming and coding my husband was that way uh, mm -hmm. and he has math degree i would just recommend that there are kind of two areas of application there. There is the hands-on kind of applied math, and that'd be like areas like finance, um, processing, uh, actually in a food company or any other manufacturing, you always have process engineers and process controls. That's very math driven. So that's the application of math in every day. Accounting is, is a great area. Um, in the less applied, but more the, the theoretical. Um, there is still areas of research um, that could be done and you could look into being in a research field, whether that was aerospace or um, kind of green energy. Startups are a great area to look if you're looking to be more academic and research-based. Um, but I think I'd summarize it down to math is really used in every aspect of the real world. In every job, there's math. Um, so it's how you want to apply that math and what kind of things you want to do. If that's problem solving, if that is tracking things, or whether it's research. For sure, yeah. There's so many different 
so many different options out there and sometimes it does just take uh, talking to someone who who maybe has gone down the untraditional path. So uh, thank you for that, Sherry. Uh, we did have a question here that is more specific to um, McCain's and your time there. So if someone's wondering, what is the staff strength, in your opinion, of the organization at McCain's? So uh, I'm not sure if that means staff strength as in how many employees we have or what's our core strength. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I take both. it as the core strength, or both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can answer both. Um, so yeah. I don't have the exact number of employees. I believe we're 20,000 to 30,000 globally. Um, but as for our core strengths, that's an easier question to ask. Um, McCain employees all have uh, some core competencies, we call them, and they're strengths that all employees are leveraging to succeed in our fields, regardless of what the job are. Some examples of those are uh, customer focus, which I mentioned, resilience, uh, again, I'm going to be driving through my top ones here. Um, <laughs> collaboration, communication, uh, drive results. There's two more, which are escaping my memory, but I think it's because those are the ones I don't use very well. Oh, courage. That's one as well. Uh, so they're kind of like buckets of key behaviors that will help an individual succeed. Um, courage regards to saying what needs to be said, uh, you know, not really waiting back, hiding. If it needs to be said, step up and say it. Collaboration is fairly self-evident because we have so many different business units that have to work together. Uh, customer focus, and I like to describe that if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. And your customer can be a Tim Hortons or your customer could be your marketing partner that you're making a product for. It could be your quality manager you're designing a test for. Um, we all treat everyone as if they're our customer and we want to do the best for them. So I'm happy to, um, if everyone would like, or anyone would like to have more details on those, I'm happy I could share those because um, they're kind of common across many businesses as well. It sounds like a wonderful, wonderful place to work. And you mentioned a couple of things too during your presentation about like mentorship program and, you know, just all these extra things that you weren't aware of uh, within the company before you started working there. So it, it sounds really great. Uh, and hopefully some of the people here today, if they get a chance to work for McCain, will, will experience it too. Um, so we have a lot of questions coming in live through the chat. So I'm going to skip to some of those just to make sure we, okay. get, we get to those who are attending today. Um, so we have someone who is asking, even though this presentation is more tailored to the sciences um, and, you know, in a science job, they're wondering if you're aware of any new positions that might be opening up for mechanical engineering. Um, mm -hmm. With start dates in January or February, they have experience working in pork food manufacturing plant as a co-op student and okay. interesting in working in a plant in New Brunswick. Okay, well, love to hear someone's address in New Brunswick. I can't say on the start date. I'm not sure of the exact postings. I highly recommend you go to our career site. Um, there will be some listed as well. If you don't see exactly what you want listed, please uh, submit your resume anyway. Uh, but there are always openings in our mechanical engineering um, department. We have engineering for three different sites here in New Brunswick alone. Uh, so there's always openings. Perfect. I also just put uh, Sherry's LinkedIn um, in the chat. So if anyone does want to connect with Sherry afterwards or ask them more questions or ask her more questions, um, that's there for you as well. Um, so we have another attendee who's wondering if a reference letter from a McCain's employee at another plant in a different province will still be helpful in applying for a job at McCain in New Brunswick. 100%, 100%. Um, all the employees across the company, um, we interact. So even if it's from another plant, still going to hold relevance and weight uh, to regardless where you want to go. And a reference letter from a fellow, McC fellow McCainer uh, will really support you as well. So yes, highly recommend that. Awesome, fantastic. Um, so we're, we have someone else asking also about um, careers with McCain's and they're wondering if work experience in other countries um, is still helpful and valuable for them to get an, inter an interview with McCain's. Oh yes, for sure as well. This is a global company and we hire globally. We take our diversity and inclusion very seriously. Uh, so we really wanna have that global aspect as well to our workplaces. I have half of my team right now 
um, are actual individuals who have moved here from other com oh. uh, countries and other companies. So yes, that experience is very relevant. Great, that's awesome to hear. Um, we had a couple of people who, who asked similar questions around that. Um, and someone else who was asked about job opportunities for PhD and graduate students, which again, obviously you took a master's degree and you're at, you're at McCain. Um, anything specific you wanted to touch on for that for PhD and graduate opportunities? Mm -hmm. So those are really interesting when you're applying. Um, many of our postings will give the minimum requirement. Uh, some will actually have a minimum required of education. Some will just say good to have. If you do have a graduate work or a PhD, make sure you list it, call it out. That will really be interesting to your hiring manager. Um, we really like to see those candidates as they hit the ground running really fast uh, for learning the business as well as knowing how to conduct business and how to conduct research. Right. Um, we also have some individuals who are completing their ongoing uh, postgraduate research and work while working at McCain. So that's an opportunity as okay. well. Okay. Awesome, thank you. So now we have a question that's a little bit more um, general in terms of preparing for your career. So att an attendee is wondering what some tips are that you might have uh, to increase your chances for job opportunities and some other, other methods of connecting or building networks at university. Was there anything particular you did as a student um, to help prepare you for that? So the first thing I did was I, um, I found a job that was off campus. I would have loved to have a summer job on campus because at that time I thought I was just gonna be a lab technician. Building out your network. So if you can find a job off campus, I'd highly recommend that, or at least have activities or interests um, that broaden out your social circle. Um, that will help you find those connections to find the opportunities. Um, volunteering work, very valuable as well. It's not a mandatory, but it always gives you those additional skills that you can leverage in an interview or have a demonstration and it increases your social circle as well. Any opportunity that you can build your public speaking skills on, I highly recommend you take. Um, that is, I'd say, one of the tiniest edges I might have on other colleagues in the same level is I have no fear of public speaking. I got up in front of a conference of 3,000 people and gave a speech and, you know, <laughs> not that big of a deal. That is such a valuable skill and it will really help you not only ace those interviews, but get you success in your career as well. That's a really great piece of advice because we that's one of the big things we often hear from students and young alumni as well um, in terms of preparing for their career and even joining you know web, webinar sessions and stuff like this when you are visible on screen, especially now that so many things are virtual. Um, really having the confidence and um, yeah, and being being in a public setting where you're speaking to others, I think is really important and can go a long, long way. So it's great to hear that that's helped you as well. So we had another live question come in from someone asking if it's possible to meet with the talent acquisition in person and if visiting the plant in Bristol, uh, Florence or Bristol and meeting someone in person could be you know, beneficial to them getting employment at McCain. So I'd say in normal situations, yes. Um, unfortunately with COVID, we have a travel ban and that also means no visitors. We do have a HR department and talent acquisition based right here in Florenceville. Um, they would most likely, uh, in normal times, uh, be open to having a sit down, having a networking conversation. Uh, we don't offer tours to the public, uh, but if you were to have a meeting and you got approval for a tour, I'd be happy to take you around the plant uh, myself. Uh, it's just not something we do for the public. Because we are not allowing visitors and no travel at this time with the current COVID restrictions, it's not possible. So I really suggest the LinkedIn instead. Our HR talent managers are active every day on LinkedIn. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we still have a few more minutes. Um, we had a question that was pre-submitted to us and I, I thought it was an interesting one to bring up. There, they're interested in you enlightening us on the approach that you take on developing a new product. Um, they said McCain is one of the most resilient brands in the food space. How has the company managed to change so swiftly in, in the last decade? So maybe if you wanted to chat a little bit about that. Yes, I'll bring up my nerddom because I love talking <laughs> yeah. potatoes. So um, the development process or product development process um, is a two-pronged approach. We always start with 
the customer. So what does the customer want? What does the customer need? So we have insights departments that are building up that research of like, what are the needs that are in the spaces right now? What's a gap that customers are experiencing? The second prong of what we know what they need is how do we meet that and meet their expectations? So then we have consumer research where we would take and show them our prototypes, our products, our developments, and, and get that feedback and continue to develop it so it meets the expectation for the need. We have a marketing department and we focus on um, innovation and then brand. The innovation team is the one who are monitoring those customer needs and they're bringing us those and we work with them to develop the products to meet the needs. Uh, it goes through several iterations. We go through feasibility checks. We make sure that can we make it? Can we make it safely? To be frank, can we make it profitably? Or do we need to use a co-man to do this? Then we take it into our consumer research, so the second prong, and have them take it to consumers and make sure it meets expectations. If everything looks like it's going to be something that people want, it then goes into our commercializations where we begin our testing. We take it into the factory and we take it into customers, whether that's food service or whether that's retail, get their buy-in and then it goes to launch. The product development process can take anywhere from six uh, for a very easy product to two years, uh, six months oh, wow. to two years uh, to be done. There's just a lot of work that has to be done to refine products, make it feasible, make it profitable, um, and then make sure it fits that customer need and working with a lot of different business units uh, to complete that. And as a product developer, uh, I work with a partner but that whole process is led by us. Um, so we have to monitor the entire thing, execute the work, design the work, take it to the next step, find the next part that has to fit in. So it's a lot of problem solving and you wear many hats when you're in product development to complete <laughs> that whole process. That's super interesting. And as a non-science person myself, it's, it's really, really cool to hear about all the different things you've done in your career and specifically product development. It's just, it's very interesting. Um, and hopefully to some of the, the folks here today, if you if you do have a science background or you're interested in this sort of field, hopefully you've, you've gained some insight into, you know, an interesting career path that you could take yourself as well. Um, so I think I'll, I'll do one more question here. We're just about five minutes out. And uh, one of our attendees had asked if, if you wish you had done anything differently in your career path. Oh, that is an interesting question. <laughs> it is. So I, I think because I followed the opportunities or I followed the breadcrumbs as they, as they came up and spoke for the next thing I wanted, if I had done anything differently, I would, I would have ended up in a different spot. So I, I wouldn't have pinpointed any particular decision as being, you know, something I wish I had turned back the time. Um, if anything, if I could have done things differently, I most likely would have done more research before entering um, my particular field of study for all the opportunities there, there were. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even aware about food processing. I, I didn't even know a food science degree was possible. Uh, I think that would be the only thing I could change. But I still ended up here. So I, I don't think that I made any particular mistakes along the way. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you in the sense of, I'm very much a believer that, like I said earlier, all of these experiences, all of the education you take, the different jobs you might have, you know, it all leads you to the place that you want to be eventually. So I, I agree that, you know, you ended up where you wanted to be in your career and that's fantastic. Um, so thank you, Sherry, for that. Um, we do actually have one more live question. I'm just going to ask this before the end as well. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but they're wondering about opportunities available for software engineer undergrads, if there's any particular ones you know that are available. Um, I would like this particular individual to uh, contact me on LinkedIn because oh, I do know of a software engineer opportunity. Uh, oh, excellent. I was, I was told to look out for this. Uh, <laughs> I, so we have our, um, I call it data center 
because that's what we call it internally, uh, but it's our um, information services building. We have an entire building about that, but there's also uh, software engineers and software designers in our finance department who are always looking for good candidates and people who have a, a drive to learn something new. So please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect you uh, with a hiring manager who's looking right now. Oh, that's amazing and very generous. Thank you, Sherry. And hopefully um, it was an anonymous question, but hopefully you're still here attending. <laughs> and um, if you have any issues connecting with Sherry, feel free to reach out to me. You'd have my email as well and I can uh, I can get the two of you connected. That's fantastic. Well, Sherry, thank you so very much for being here with us today. We truly couldn't do these events without the support of our alumni community. It's been fantastic hearing about your story and having you here to, to answer some questions. So really appreciate it. Thank you so, so oh, much. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. I love talking about potatoes. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you to all of our attendees here today as well. Um, we really appreciate you taking, taking the time to attend these sessions um, and to be part of the 10,000 Coffees Office Hour program. We do have some other upcoming events this year, not necessarily through 10,000 Coffees, but one next week on letting go of the imposter syndrome which is you know, something that a lot of students and alumni struggle with. So feel free to visit our website, umb.ca slash alumni, if you think that this event might be of interest to you. Um, and there's also a career fair coming up on October 7th through the Career Development and Employment Center. So I encourage you to check that out as well if you are on the career hunt right now or interested in connecting with different businesses. And just a heads up for everyone that we will be hosting more of these office hour sessions throughout the year, once a month. So stay tuned, check your online hubs for what different faculties we're going to be exploring. Um, and we hope to see you back for some more events. So thank you, everyone, and hope you have a wonderful day.